Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I wanna do a breakdown of my financial goals for 2022. Towards the end of the year, it's always a good idea to set some time aside and think about what are the major things you want to achieve, maybe in your career, in your personal life. And one of those key areas that I think is important for everyone to focus on uh, is of course your finances. What are you going to aim for over the next year? And then from there, you can set how you're planning on achieving those goals. This is gonna be a pretty laid back video. I'm just gonna go through three of the major things that I want to achieve in terms of my business, in terms of my wealth, and other things that I'm looking to achieve specifically in relation to investing and finance. So hopefully this inspires you and helps you uh, figure out what kind of goals you should be setting going forward. Um, or maybe you just are interested in seeing what I have uh, on my list of things that I want to achieve. But regardless of what it is, I hope you guys get some value out of today's video. If you do, please leave a like on the video and hit subscribe if you want to stay up to date with content that I post in the future. But with that said, let's jump into the video. The first finance goal that I have for 2022 is that in 2022, I want to double my income or double my revenue for my online business. And that might seem like an insane thing to want to double your income in a single year, but there's a pretty good reason as to why that is my specific target for 2022. My business and many other people who have online businesses, especially around YouTube, uh, experience a lot of volatility when it comes to revenue and income over time, particularly when it comes to month by month. Sometimes there will be be a six times difference in revenue from one month to the next month. So just to throw a random number out there, one month might be 5,000, the next month might be 30. So it's very, very up and down. And I certainly experienced a lot of that over the past couple of years. From 2019 to 2020, there was a massive increase in the performance of my business, driven primarily by the fact that my YouTube channel continued to thrive, as well as the success of my private investor platform. But most importantly, in 2020, there was a significant financial event that drove a lot of traffic towards YouTube videos in the finance and investing space. And that of course was the beginning of the pandemic and the 30 plus plus percent crash that the stock market experienced. That naturally brought in new viewership that obviously drives directly and revenue on YouTube, but it also drives revenue throughout the rest of my business in terms of sponsorships for things where I get commissions if people sign up to finance or investing related products like ShareSide, for example, get four months off a yearly subscription if you want down in the description below. <laughs> and while of course that was fantastic for comparisons between 2019 and 2020, it also made comparisons between between last year and this year, 2021, extremely challenging. And that's what I actually experienced this year, whereby 2019 to 2020 was a massive increase in my revenue. Between 2020 and 2021, things actually remained pretty similar. On top of the massive short-term viewership that came in in early 2020, that made comparisons difficult to 2021, a couple of the evergreen videos, videos that kind of sit on the search results and get generate consistent views for me, um, a lot of those videos or a cut, not a lot, a couple of those videos that had been doing very, very well for me that I'd made in 2019, 2020 also began to die out and lose their search rank in 2021. And as a result of that, there was a significant kind of downward pressure on my viewership from some of those videos. I think the biggest example of that was the Investing in Shares Australia video. That was a video that I made in 2019. I actually made a dedicated video about how much that video made me in ad revenue. I'll leave a link down in the description below if you're interested because it is insane how much money that video made me. But that video continued to get views in 2020 in, and in this year, but towards the end of this year, it has died off significantly and that obviously drove some downward pressure on my overall views. And then I think the last reason why my revenue from last year to this year was fairly similar in the same ballpark and certainly didn't experience the growth that I experienced from 2019 to 2020 is that I really didn't do that much work in terms of um, getting, on, getting sponsors sponsorship deals. Um, there's a lot of different sponsorship deals that are out there, particularly in the finance space. Um, and I really didn't take any of those opportunities. Um, that's something I, I'm looking to do going forward. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. But throughout this year, I just continued to basically stick with the one sponsor that I've had since really the beginning I, when I started this channel, uh, and that is ShareSite. Uh, and I have been happy to be sponsored by them because um, it's a service that I use and I think is fantastic. But I do need to 
do more work in terms of getting more sponsorship deals and doing more regular sponsored segments throughout videos in order to drive consistent revenue from that area. So even though this year faced very, very tough comparisons, there is still a significant amount of room for me to grow in my income and revenue streams going into next year with what my business looks like right now. And I'm looking to capitalize on some of those, um, some of those streams and really push hard to continue to grow my business after a year of tough comparisons. I just spoke about sponsorships. There's certainly more room for me to do more sponsorship deals and do more sponsor segments regularly in my video. So rather than doing like one every month, I could do two every month or, or whatever it is. Um, in terms of YouTube AdSense specifically, I think there's easily a two to six times increase that can happen over the next year in that area. So there's a significant room for growth there. And even in my investing platform where there is a limited number of spaces available, I estimate there's probably about 20 to 40% I can gain in my revenue from that segment. So I've had a look at my business. I think there's a lot of areas where I can get more out of my current income streams. And going into next year, I'll be looking to try and capitalize on some of those and grow, continue to grow my business after the last year where there wasn't really too much growth. Goal number two, my second finance goal for 2022 is that I want to buy an investment property. So I want to get into the property market. I don't own a property currently. I currently, I, I rent where I work and where I live. And uh, it's been something I've wanted to do for some time. Something that's been a little bit more difficult because I am self-employed. So there's a few more loops you kind of have to jump through in order to be approved for a loan. Um, but I'm at the stage now where that is something that is possible for me. So I'm looking to do that over the next year. I think it's a good idea to have diversification in different asset classes and my portfolio right now is very, very much concentrated in the stock market in a number of individual businesses. So I'm really looking forward to diversify that with a property that can cash flow. And particularly given the economic or macroeconomic environment that we're seeing right now, um, having an investment property, having an appreciating asset with a loan behind it, a mortgage behind it, is exactly what I need in order to have a significant inflation hedge in my portfolio. The reason that investing in a property with a long-term loan or mortgage is a good way to hedge yourself against inflation is of course, because the debt figure uh, will stay the same. The, the number on it is how much debt you need to pay down. Whereas if there is inflation, then you will likely experience property price appreciation, or even if you don't in the short term, even if the markets do come down as a result of inflation scares, you will be able to raise rents on those properties through inflation. And as a result, the debt actually gets smaller when adjusted for inflation. You can kind of think of it like this. If you have a lot of cash in an inflationary environment, then inflation is going to eat away at that cash. Um, so what you actually want is the opposite of cash, which in this case is borrowing cash. If you borrow cash and your income goes up, so rental yield goes up or your other income sources go up, then you're more easily able to pay off that loan. And it's almost as if that loan has gotten smaller. I'm also probably looking to get a property that can positively cash flow, whether that's immediately positively cash flowing, I don't think that's probably something I can find in Melbourne. Um, but certainly I can try and find something that needs cosmetic renovations and try and get it to cash flow after putting some money into some renovations. The way I think about property, the way I will think about property is very, very similar to how I approach business valuations. I like cash flow. I want a positive cash flow. I don't want a property that takes away from from my ability to borrow. I don't want it to be drawing out of my income. Uh, I want a property that makes me money and can be an income source, generate cash flow that I can then flow into other assets, whether it's back into the property market uh, or also back into the stock market. And on top of all of that, from an investment point of view, I'm also just really excited to invest in the property market. Um, I studied property investment at university. I studied at a unit of property investment, I should say. Um, and I remember how valuable that was actually in applying some of those principles to the stock market. Market, but I'm really excited to take my investing into a different asset class that still has similar principles in terms of cash flow and analysis. Um, so I'm really excited to go and take on that challenge um, because it's something I haven't done before. It's going to take a lot of research and a lot of learning, um, but I'm excited to have something to kind of something different to look forward to in terms of investing into the next year. And then the final goal for today's video, my goal number three, finance goal number three 
for 2022 is that I want to reduce the waste in my business and save and invest more. Um, so running an online business or running any business by your, mostly by yourself, which is what I'm doing and have been doing for some time. Of course, I have contractors that help me do certain things. Um, but for the most part, it's just me um, sitting here and trying to do everything. And for me, what that has meant is the inefficiencies in my business have come in terms of the expense side, even personally as well. I've tended, especially over the last year, to lean on the side of um, if I find some kind of software or some kind of ongoing expense that will save me time or, or save me some kind of energy or something like that, I just sign up to it and subscribe to it and think about the money later. And that's really been my attitude um, since I've just been so busy that I've just wanted to use any kind of way that I can uh, to save time and to kind of, I guess, improve my efficiency on how I'm working, be able to work more. But on the money side, it's made my business on the expense side very, very inefficient. Just to give you an example, I use stock photos and stock videos in some of my content. So some of my overlays, I'll have a, a little stock video of someone in a board meeting, writing something on a board, depending on what I'm talking about. Um, those subscriptions are not cheap. I think usually they run from, you know, four to $600 a year. And uh, I've used a number of them. So it's a, that's you know an example of where I just need to sit down, track my expenses and have a look at what I need going into the next year and what I don't need and just cut out as much expense that I can, um, still keeping things that are saving me time and that I, I think are worth the gains in efficiency, um, but eliminating things that I'm not using or things where I can find a different service that is uh, cheaper or maybe is more geared towards what I need rather than a more general thing that I've just signed up for because I wanted something quickly. And given the current state of my business, this is certainly going to have less of an effect on the growth of my income than some of the upside things that I spoke about earlier in terms of growing my revenue streams and that sort of thing. Um, but it can make a significant difference. I do think there's probably, a you know, there, there is a significant amount of profit margin improvement that can be had from uh, removing some of these expenses. And I think it's a good habit to at least once a year or every now and then uh, to take a look at your expenses, whether it's personally or in a business and just simplify it and just clean it up. Because if you leave it for too long, it gets incredibly messy and then it's just extremely difficult to go through and fix. I kind of think of it as like weeding the garden, right? If you just leave it for two years, then you're gonna have this massive entangled expenses that you're gonna have to sit there for days and try and figure out what's a plant and what's a weed. Uh, whereas if you do it every six months or even more frequently than that, um, then you can just pick out the weeds. You can realize what you don't need to be spending money on, get rid of them, and it'll be a lot easier to maintain. But those were the three major finance goals that I have for 2022. Um, what did I say at the start? I wanted to double my income or double my revenue, I should say. Um, I want to invest in the property market and I want to organize my expenses and reduce waste, improve my profit margins in my business. So um, that's what I'm aiming for going forward over the next year. I'd love to hear what you guys are aiming for. It's gonna be different for everyone. If you're running a business, it might be similar. If you're not running a business, it will be very, very different. Um, but I'm curious to see what are you aiming at in terms of your finance and investing goals over the next year. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. But with that said, I hope you guys got some value out of today's video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video and hit subscribe if you want to stay up to date with content that I post in the future. But with that said, hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.